you're still watching Waze. So now we're going to take what's in the news. Sanzi, I'll start with you. Okay, so uh, COVID and vaccine, we're still in the COVID era. Now, uh, what I found interesting in the news today, which Uti already has her own opinion of it, is that federal government creates a self-electronic registration link for COVID-19 vaccines. Okay, so this, it's not, the portal is not open yet. It's going, they're going to open it up in uh, a couple of days. So right now they are training health workers on how to administer the vaccine. And obviously they're working on the portal. And the link would uh, enable Nigerians to personally register themselves obtain their pre-vaccination numbers and schedule their preferred date and time for vaccination. Interesting. <laughs> Should I start? Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> federal government or federal government? Somewhere, this sounds like a good idea. It actually sounds like they're making a plan. They're trying, mm. right? Okay, now let's go back to all the recent happenings. Okay. NIN, okay. one. Register a telco, two. There is Voter's card. Three. There is, I mean, driver's license. There, I mean, let's not even keep going about the different databases that they have. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when we see these things, and I wonder for the people who sit around the table to discuss these plans. Granted, everybody's learning how to deal with COVID. Nobody has a roadmap. Mm -hmm. But to a certain extent, when it comes to vaccine rollout, we do have other countries who are doing this. I will take, for example, the UK, who has done an exemplary job of getting their, their citizens the vaccinated. Mm. You sit in your house, and somebody sends you a letter and says, if you want a vaccine, you're invited. Come to this day, this day, that day to get a vaccine. Mm. Now, I understand that in Nigeria, we don't have a postal service. But you have all this information for, you know, from us. And quite recent as well, if you take into account the NIN, uh, NIN registration versus the telco lines and everything. Right. So if, if, at least you can reach us that way. Now, what is the volume of vaccines that we're expecting compared to the, the, population. the population, population size, you know? So again, you have my age. So you have all these things that sort of are able to allow you to identify. So the UK started with all the elderly, you know, mm. in age bands. You know how old I am and you know my phone number. How I think perhaps the reason is because a lot of Nigerians are uh, skeptical about this vaccine. I like agree. I've heard a lot of things out on the streets. I agree. So how about you send me a text message and say, you know what, you have a week if you're interested. Use a USSD code, for example, and send me, and you know, because what, what I hear, and one of the things we'll touch on today is the skepticism of Nigerians, is the fact that you have people who, tomorrow you will hear a story in the news that says the website costs 200 million naira, or the portal costs 200 million naira. Like, come on now, let's not find ways to keep spending the money that Nigeria apparently doesn't have. So anyway, interesting story. Um, I'll leave it at that. Lami, what do you have for us? Okay, um, I saw a video this morning and caught my attention. It was about um, bandits who were interviewed in their hideouts, and they made some very pertinent um, points. So I just wanted to escalate to that. Um, these people are also human. And how did they get created? The system created them. They were talking about non-inclusion. They were talking about lack of education. They were talking about lack of security. They are tired of that nomadic lifestyle. They want to be included. They want to be integrated into the society. Now, we all talk about Boko Haram to be kidnappers tomorrow, headers and all that. We are merely attacking the symptoms of the problem. Nobody is going back into the root of the trouble, of the problem. What actually created this menace? At this time, 2020, especially the Northern Governors Forum, I think that is what should be the crux of what they should be discussing now, not politicizing the issue. What are the issues, especially of the, it is a national problem, but more particularly to the North. I think what they should be talking about now is how to attack the problem. They should have a timeline. I'm not saying this problem that was created about 30, 40 years ago is going to go away. But at least we need to start taking the right steps in the right direction. What are they doing to tackle this problem? Don't forget the menace of child marriage is still very existent. They are not see, seeing it as an existential threat. The issue of lack of education is bad. There are a whole lot of, a lot of children are out of school. There's a whole lot of poverty in that area. 
and they are not talking about it. All what you see is that they come on the pages of newspaper and always politicize issues. We have serious security issues in Nigeria, particularly in the northern part of the country. They have 19 states of the northern, the northern part. Why can't they sit down and strategize? How do we get and give themselves a timeline of probably, okay, in 40 years, we hope to get out of this trouble. How do we attack? The first thing is every child must go to school. That is the starting point. I am not saying that education is the way out. Is education is the is the only way to success, right? But it is very, very crucial. Even if you are going to sell pepper, right? If you have adequate and quality education, there's a way you are going to sell it. If they are going to, if they're still going to be headers and they have basic and quality education, they will adopt the mechanized style. This nomadic moving from here, destroying crops and crops, they will understand what they are doing to this. They don't understand what they are doing to the economy at the moment. So this is a revolution. And I think every leader should sit down and go back to where did we get it from and how do we take it from here? Instead of screaming at each other and going back and forth and all these governors going back and forth with each other, nobody has preferred the solution. What is the solution? Because we're all sitting down on a gun, on a keg of gunpowder, which is going to explode on everybody. It's just a matter of time. Chibi is bandits that we are seeing today. Another group is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. They are breeding another group. The issue of population control should also come to the front burner. We cannot sustain the number of children we are bear bearing in Nigeria. The infrastructure cannot support it. Nobody is talking about it. We are only attacking the symptoms. What is the root cause of it? Go back to the root cause and let us sit down and have a discussion. Nobody is having the discussion. I mean, you've hit so many nails on the head. Yeah, I, population I, control. And education. I think there's uh, the part about the education. I think mm -hmm. she made a very valid point that it is within the power of the government to make it mandatory that, you know what, these people, you must go to school, at least up to secondary school, because a lot of the nomads, they don't go to school. Exactly. But, you know, the thing for me is, is it a cultural thing? Is it a religious thing? On the part of the leadership, is it the conspiracy that, you know, the current state of affairs benefits them? Or have we actually gotten to a point, you know, this snowball effect, where the problem has now gotten so large that perhaps yeah, they don't even know how to go about it. So we are still finding people who want to be governors of these states because, of course, it's still profitable to be in politics in Nigeria. But really, do they have an answer? That's the I question think, that I would pose. I think we've gotten to a place where we don't know what to do about it, so we just call it the norm. Yeah, yeah. We're accepting it. I think the bigger concern... I'm I sorry, in fact, I don't button. Sure. Um, you said that they probably don't have the answers. I don't expect any governor to have an answer, but there are some people who are trained for this. Get international help. Mm. There are some people whose job is security. Bring them in. Nobody's an island. Nobody knows everything. Bring people in to start preferring solutions. Solution. That's all. Absolutely. Totally spot on. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lamy. So um, I'll go right into my story. So um, mine is from the Lagos State Government, and it reads, Lagos moves against bottled um, sachet water producers and seals of factories. So the Lagos State, and I didn't know that there was a body that did this, but the Lagos State Water Regulatory Commission has sealed off some production um, factories uh, that engage in producing water for falling short of good manufacturing practices. So again, we have so many checks and balances in it. Like you never even know until stories so like this bodies. come out, right? You don't know what body's doing what. So, but apparently this one exists to check the quality um, of practices within these kind of organizations in Lagos State. And what stood out for me in the story was that in quantifying the scale of the problem, they said most of the producers had issues. Now, they didn't close down most of them, but okay. it was clear in the story that most of these producers fell short in one way or the other. Now, these people produce a very basic it. and very important product, water, that mm -hmm. we drink, that is the foundation of our health, and then we find that you know there is no best practice from what the story is saying about the production. Mm -hmm. And you know it seems like the concept of buying water now in terms of for consumption is yeah. the norm in almost every household. That's true. The days of actually putting water boiling in a pot water. and boiling water and let it cool down, Nobody having filters. Nobody has that time mm -hmm. now because it's ah. so cheap. 
You know, it's so cheap. So why would I want to do that when I could just have someone deliver 10 bags of pure water to my house and I move mm -hmm. on? But people really need to start thinking about their providers and making sure that they're actually buying water from reputable sources. I remember a few years ago, I actually stopped buying one of the very popular bottled brands because I found out there were so many fakes. Oh, so yeah, because the bottles were so common, they would typically find them, wash them, fill them up and reseal them. So, I, you know, you buy water and it has a funny taste. I know, so you know something is not right. And then right. literally everybody said to me, oh, don't you know, that's, that's the problem with that brand. So I had to switch brands. But, I mean, given how we, we rely on these companies, it's important that everybody um, takes the time to um, protect themselves uh, and, and make the right choices. Okay, so that's about it for what we have in the news. We'll be right back after this short break. Please stay with us.